Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at a pretty fancy OBD2 reader. So this is like supposedly a professional one. So we'll see what this thing can do. All right, guys, let's pop this thing open and see what we got in there. So, so these go for quite a bit more money than your average one because you can pick one up for about 20 bucks. But these go closer to like 100. So I'm not sure what's so special about them. Let's find out. Can they do more or do they just look nicer or what? All right, so it looks like it has its own little pouch and the company name is Kutcher. So it's very nice that they include this little pouch so you can, you know, put it back and not. All right, well that looks pretty nice, guys. All right, well that definitely looks pro. So we got a USB cable of some sort. Looks like here we have the OBD2 data cable and then we have the scanner itself. This thing is large, guys. Look how big that is plug goes in the top there it does have like this rubber around it so here are the buttons I guess we'll see what they do in a second here we have the manual with a CD software of some sort so this is a pretty substantial manual with a lot of information so I'm guessing this thing can do more than a normal OBD2 reader all right, so let's go ahead and plug this cable into it. So that's kind of nice that the cable comes with a little Velcro and it seems to be pretty long, guys. I would say about five feet or so. It seems like this is kind of like the old CRT monitors that we used to have on computers. It's the kind of a uh, connector this is. All right, guys, so we got our cable on. So let's go ahead and see if we can connect to something. All right, guys, so the only car we have around here is the Chevrolet Volt. So this is kind of a specialty car, so I'm kind of curious what this thing will read from it. So at this moment, we don't have any other cars. So we'll have to wait for a Beamer to come back, and we can test it on that. So let's go ahead and try to plug it into the Volt here. I'm going to go ahead and power it on. That way it is on. So the plug on this car is really easy. It's just right here. All right, guys, I had to close the door because the uh, car is going crazy with the door open and all that bell sound. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in while you guys can look at this thing and see if we can see anything together. All right, so here we go. And there it is, guys. So there is like a little film here on top that needs to probably come off so we can see a little better. There we go. That's much cleaner. So here we can see a menu. So this Volt doesn't have anything wrong with it at the moment. Well, let's see what this tool here shows us. So here we have arrow buttons. If I push them down, looks like we're just selecting the different uh, things you want. So these are just selectors here. Let's go to diagnose right there. I'm going to push OK on that. It's processing. OK, so the check engine light is off. OK, so far I'm noticing that, you know, there's a little bit more information here than normal. I'm not sure what I pushed. Here we go. We have some battery information down here. 12.7 volts. Seems a little low, to be honest. OK, this is kind of crazy, but there are actually seven ECUs in this car. That's crazy. I'm not sure what that all is about. I have a feeling because this is a volt, this is kind of, uh, you know, probably a little weird for this thing. It's not supported. So, yeah, there's a lot of things not supported in here. So let's say erase codes, I am readiness. The emission readiness, we'll look at that. All right, so that's kind of interesting. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. All right, so here we go. We got some interesting stuff going on here. So we got calculated load, coolant temperature. Okay, that's all from that ECU that it took. Um, let's see if we can go to the next ECU. Okay, no, okay, so we got definitely some good information here, guys. So it's going to tell you, if you're driving on check engine, it's going to tell you how many miles it drove on with the check engine light on. Number of warm-ups since DTC, 139. Distance travel since DTC is 18, 1,820 miles. Okay, I remember I did have a check engine light last year because it was sitting too long. And the battery died and that triggered a check engine light. And here is our voltage. Very interesting. I'm kind of surprised that the voltage is so low, but I guess for this car, maybe that's normal. All right, here we go. This is interesting. So we got fuel rail pressure, 69 PSI. It seems like it's all scattered. I, I'm guessing because this car is not normal. So this thing is kind of just randomly reading, you know, whatever it can read. Um, by the way, guys, I didn't notice, but there's a little light here that says like a check mark, no fault codes. 
pending fault codes and permanent fault codes. Okay. That's really cool, guys. So before even like looking at the screen, you can know already here the codes that this vehicle will have. So this one is, you know, got to check. So if you don't even want to run through this and you need the basics, you got basics right here lighting up right away. That is awesome. I do like that a lot. All right. So that's pretty cool. So it is a little bit more advanced than a normal one. So that's a good thing. So you are paying for, you know, a little bit more functionality here. But I don't see any more deeper stuff. So and I'm guessing it's maybe because of this car. So we need to find another car that maybe this thing can be a little bit more useful. So let's jump over to another one. All right, guys. So we have the Beamer here. So let's see what this one is going to show us. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the ignition here. Actually, let's go ahead and crank it. So this one does have a check engine light on, as you can see. So, you know, as we know, Beamers, you know, they have a lot of issues. So we are in. Let's see what we can find. So we're going to push OK. Okay, there seems to be a lot more reading going on. Okay, so it's saying the check engine light is on and we have three reasons for that and as you can see guys we have down here that permanent fault code is on so there's no pending codes but they're all permanent codes all right so let's check out exactly what's going on with this bmw we're gonna push okay i'm guessing or what are we gonna push there we go so we're gonna read the codes i'm gonna push okay current codes they are three of them all right, so the first one is secondary air injection system insufficient flow bank two. All right, so I guess it has something to do with the air intake. 492, interesting. All right, so let's go to our next one. All right, so same thing, but it's bank one. So this has to do with airflow so far to the engine looks like. Intake air temperature sensor. Okay, so this is all services has to do with the MAF sensor is bad on this thing. It needs to be changed. All right, so that's pretty simple. All right, so let's try to erase the code and see what happens. So I'm going to see if you guys see that check engine in the background there. And I'm going to go ahead and push OK. Are you sure? OK. P uh, please turn ignition on with engine off. OK. It doesn't want the engine to run. All right. Well, we can do that. There we go. So ignition's on. All right, guys, let's do this. Three, two, one. All right, so it seems like we erased it, but our check engine light is still there. So I wonder if it's just redundant. And we do have a check mark here. So let's go ahead and turn off the ignition and start the car again and see what happens. All right, it's gone. All right, well, that's good. I have a feeling it's probably going to come back, but it's gone for now. All right, let's see. Let's read code right quick again. And there's no codes, so we cleared all our codes. Um, that might have been an intermittent kind of code and might not come back. So, yeah, guys, you know, if you have something like that, Technically, that could be fixed, but I'm not sure if this is a problem that's going to come back. Who knows? It might, but it's not there right now, so it's not an immediate problem. Looks like all the sensors work. They're just, maybe they just malfunctioned for a little bit, or maybe when there was a repair done, you know, they malfunctioned then, and then, you know, never got reset. I'm not sure, but they are gone now. Oh, we have pending codes. Okay, so we did not get rid of our problems. They're coming back. The pending codes triangle is coming back, so maybe let's go check that out right quick. Oh, well, let's see what kind of pending codes we have. And our pending code is a whole, okay, well, no, it's the same thing. It's air temperature sensor. So, yeah, it looks like we do have this problem still, so, and it will be coming back. Since it's pending, that means it's only a matter of time till it shows up as the, you know, check engine, permanent check engine. That's kind of cool. I really love these lights on the bottom. I can totally tell how this would be very useful for quick diagnosing or at least figuring out if the car is alright or not. 
All right, let's see data stream. What is this? All right, guys. So we got a bunch of stats on this one. So yeah, this car is definitely cooperating a lot more with data. So we have fuel system. We have load value there. We have engine coolant. So yeah, as you can see, guys, we got engine RPM. Let's see if I can push the gas a little bit. And there you can see the engine RPM went up. Ignition. That's cool. Yeah, so this thing really has a lot of information. So this thing is definitely professional grade reader. Well, let's see what kind of graphic items we can look at. So let's just say we're going to do load value. Push OK. And we should. Okay, so first you check, push OK to check it. And then you push escape to initiate it. Yes, and there we go. So that's our load. So I'm going to go ahead and throttle it up there. Okay, yeah, so we saw our load jump up there. So as I'm throttling it, that's the little spikes of load. Very cool. I'm genuinely impressed. So let's see if we can do the O2 sensor test. All right, so it's passed. So you can actually, before you ride off your, you know, as everything's fine, you can check your O2 sensors because O2 sensors could be very uh, tricky. So here I passed. So it goes through the voltage tests. So you go rich to lean, lean to rich, low voltage, high voltage. So this thing really goes into detail, guys, for the uh, basic things. Now, I don't see anything like more advanced, which maybe you can upload this thing. And I'm guessing that's what that's for, data. And as you can see, guys, you know, it can do pretty much, you know, all the basic things you would need to do. So if you're somebody that wanted to know more information about your vehicle, or you need to check vehicles constantly quickly this could be a good one because you know you have a quick readout here and then you know you can dig in deeper if you need to so you know you can have a vehicle come in with no check engine light but this thing will tell you automatically real quick that something's wrong with it because it has a pending fault like the check engine light will come back so this device will catch it quick before the problem comes if you're interested in picking up something like this, I'll leave a link in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If you want to see more videos and you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.